Hi there, this is David and welcome to my review of The Cruel King and the Great Hero, released for the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first saw footage of this game, I thought that it looked like absolute garbage. Just some ugly girl with a pot in her head who would run left and fight some random battles. And then the name didn't help either. I figured that it would be kind of like an unmemorable slog without a good storyline, as well as a complete waste of money. However, I'm a sucker for a good collector's edition, and whenever I saw what they were giving away for only $60, I thought, eh, what the hell, I'll pick it up. What's the worst that could possibly happen? The game itself could be crap, but it would be rare, and I would have a cute showpiece for my shelf. So whenever I first fired the game up, I was greeted with a tutorial on everything, even how to walk. And my impatient ass who's been gaming since the 1980s was like, ugh, come on. But the more that I played it, the more that I realized that all my preconceived notions were wrong, and there was actually something special here. The story stars the great hero Yu, a little orphan girl whose father was the great hero, who fought against the Demon King, only to ultimately lose. And that's why she's now being raised by the Dragon King. He seems sweet, and he truly loves Yu, and she wants to become just like her late father. So she sets off on adventures, and while she does, the Dragon King looks over her in secret. You'll constantly see him roaming around in the background, along with other forest creatures. And it's super cute how he'll actually help you out by secretly busting barriers, and imparting flames on her sword during battles. Honestly, as I was going from place to place, I found myself not really looking at you, but looking instead at the background, to see what I could spot hidden back there. You know the saying that you need to walk before you can run? Well, it's definitely true here. You begin by walking everywhere, and then you can run through the areas once you level up a little bit. Once you reach a certain level, you'll be able to run at double speed and have half the encounter rate. So it's pretty nice, though I must say I was miffed at first because of the lack of a run button. What starts off as straight exploration quickly becomes much more complex as you'll find treasures hanging from the roof that you can't access, buried treasures that only your partners can access, snow drifts blocking your way, wind tunnels, boulders, and just all sorts of obstacles blocking off branching paths that you know that you'll need to go back to and explore further on in the future. The map is very user-friendly with icons to keep track of shops, quests, and objectives. Quick travel is also eventually unlocked, which allows you to travel back into town, as well as between the different magical fountains. The entire game is modeled after like a fairy tale, and each time that you get into a random encounter, the pages flip, and you also save with a bookmark, and you even keep track of your quests with a scrapbook. It's all really whimsical and charming. The graphics are beautiful, and the music is fitting. It's really a shame that all the voice acting is only in Japanese, though. But that's not really a deal breaker to me. I normally skip through all their slow talking anyway. Encounters are unfortunately random, and they do give me a Paper Mario vibe, except without all the timing. And while it might look basic, what starts off as easy quickly becomes much more difficult, though not to the point of frustration or anything. It's all pretty fair, as long as you use some strategy and a little bit of brain power. In addition to regular physical attacks, you have skills, and each turn you regain one skill point. So feel free to use your powerful skills against the harder random encounters, as well as all the bosses. Enemies positioning is also important, as your skills will hit enemy groups, lines, and areas. Similar to, like, Karna Trigger. And if you hit a weakness, you'll do extra damage as well as stun them for two turns. All this being said, though, with the backtracking and the need for side quests, I do wish there was an auto-battle feature. After about 30 minutes or so, the game throws its first curveball at you. You're sent down to the monster's village where people are wary of you, and you can tell that they're all hiding something. There's just something off about the entire thing. Then, you see a vignette where the Dragon King is talking to a servant, who slips up and calls him the Demon King. And it's there that you know that the person who raised you, and who loves you, is the same person who killed your real father. This did come as a surprise to me, but it really shouldn't have, because if I had just read the back of the box or the art book, I would have known it. But this little twist was enough to keep me intrigued. Not all games need to be AAA masterpieces with in-depth crafting systems, skill trees, and enormous open worlds. You don't always need plot lines straight out of Game of Thrones, or character motivations so intricate that you have to keep a separate notebook running it all down. 
Sometimes a simple story, well told, and flawlessly executed with copious amounts of charm is all that you really need to veg out and have a good time. And that is what happened with me here. It's a slow burn, and definitely not for everyone. It is an acquired taste, and I did have a good time with it. Well, that's it for my review of The Cruel King and The Great Hero. And if you like this video and what did you hear on the channel, please consider heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, checking out Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. The link to them all can be found in the video description. This has been David, and if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.